In this video, we're going to cover a potential question for the ABR Part 3 oral exam in therapeutic medical physics. So you may see a question with a diagram of a general beam profile. They're, they may or may not provide an image. And then they may ask questions about flatness and symmetry or characteristics of the beam profile. So I'm going to run through a mock session of this question and then hit on some important points after the fact. The first thing they're going to ask you to do is read all the questions and then answer them. So why are there horns in the flatness profile? How is flatness defined? What are the tolerances for flatness? Define symmetry. Describe tolerances for symmetry. And how do you correct for flatness or symmetry? So after the electron hits the target, a Bremsstrahlung distribution that is pointed is caused. And one thing that is important is to know that unlike most of the 2D diagrams that you see for Linux, the flattening filter is not triangular. It's actually conical. And so because of that, you are going to have a central axis of your electron beam and it's going to come and interact with the most material within this conical flattening filter so there's a lot of material and there's going to be a lot of attenuation due to that so typically the flatness and symmetry and beam profiles are determined at 10 cm depth so that is going to help us create a nice flat profile in the middle of our beam profile however when you look at potentially the fluence on the outside of this conical flattening filter, there is a lot less material to attenuate that beam. That is going to lead to these horns that you would see on your flattening or your beam profile. Now, what I drew here is certainly exaggerated, but if you would look on the diagram you presented, you can see the horns right here. So flatness is defined in actually a couple different ways. It depends on how your clinic defines it. So Varian, Electa, TG45, all of these have their own different ways to define flatness. In my clinic, we use values inside the 80% field size and at a depth of 10. Specifically, we do the absolute value of the max value minus the min value divided by the max value plus the min value. All of that, again, is the absolute value. You multiply that by 100. And that is the TG45 recommendation and the derivation of flatness. So that is what my clinic uses. But again, depending on what source you are looking at, this may be calculated differently. What are the tolerances for flatness? So TG142 first says that you have to base your tolerances to match the treatment planning system. That is essentially your golden data and what you want your flatness and symmetry to be matched to. You also want to ensure that the manufacturer specifications are met. So for example, variant specs are plus or minus 2.5%. NCRP says they can be within 3%. Since my clinic has variant machines, we are going to use that 2.5% because it's more strict of the compared to the NCRP. And so we use 2.5% for our tolerance. Now, symmetry is defined as the degree of similarity between the ISO curves on one side of the central axis compared to the other side of the central axis. This is also defined over 80% field size at a depth of 10 cm. And typically, just like the flatness, this can be determined uh, different ways. For our clinic, we do the left value minus the right value, and that would be divided by the right value. All of that is in the absolute a value and you multiply that by 100 that will give you your symmetry now the tolerance is very similar to the flatness you want it to match your treatment planning system as well as the manufacturer specifications for symmetry variant specs are plus or minus two percent and tg40 says it could be plus or minus three percent and finally 
how do you correct for flatness or symmetry? So ideally, a beam is going to be hitting immediately right in the center of this flattening filter. That is going to yield a nice uniform distribution. However, if it is off, that is going to affect your flatness symmetry. So you can use solenoids to alter where this beam hits the center of that flattening filter at and that can help you achieve a uniform beam. Typically this is done by the engineer unless a medical physicist had had proper training to do so. So that is how a potential session would be. Some things to remember are that you want to be concise. You don't have a lot of time. You also don't always have to go into a ton of detail because not only can you dig yourself a hole, but they very well may ask you to elaborate to the point where you may not, your knowledge at some point has only so much information on a particular topic. And so uh, sometimes it's better to be, you know, short and simple. So one important thing is that when they ask you about flatness and symmetry, there's a good chance they're going to ask you how it's defined. And they're looking at whether you know if flatness and symmetry have different derivations and different equations. It's also very important to know what your clinic uses. Now, this is very helpful for two reasons. One, if you know what your clinic uses, that is a sign of a very good physicist and that you know how your treatment planning system uses flatness and symmetry. It just shows that you are competent in your clinic and that is what they are looking for. Additionally, if you know what your clinic uses, then you only need to know this one equation right here. Whereas if you didn't, like they can't expect you to know five different equations for flatness when you know how your clinic asked for it. So that is another definite beneficial uh, aspect to it. Also for the tolerances, it's good to know what the baselines are for. You may look in TG142 and it just says, you know, plus or minus 3%. Well, 3% of what? Does that mean 3% symmetry? No, it's 3% of your baseline value. So that is important as well, something they could definitely ask you further. So this is just an example of what they could ask on beam profiles. If you have any other additional questions, comment below. Hope you find these useful. Best of luck studying for part three, and hopefully there will be more videos to come to help you prepare.